Welcome to the Spirit Spot. My name is Raina Shea Broussard, and it's my hope to help guide you into your spirit spot, even if just for a few moments out of your day. I invite you to set aside whatever you have before you, if you're able, and we'll begin with three conscious breaths. Breathe in through your nose, slowly, evenly, deeply, filling your belly, and breathe out through your mouth, emptying your belly. And breathe in, and breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. Our touchstone for today is faith. When I came across today's reading, I felt that I recognized something that exists within me, within my heart, that I know to be true. I think one of the reasons I'm such a strong proponent of universalism or an interfaith approach to spirituality is that I know this feeling in my heart doesn't need a name. It is transcendent. It doesn't need a dogma. It doesn't need rituals. It doesn't need the trappings of culture or religion. It simply is. And it is part of who I am as a human being. It is the sacred within me. Our reading today comes from Stages of Faith by James W. Fowler. I want to affirm the largeness and mystery of faith, so fundamental that none of us can live well for very long without it, so universal that when we move beneath the symbols, rituals, and ethical patterns that express it, Faith is recognizably the same phenomenon in Christians, Marxists, Hindus, and Dinka. Yet it is so infinitely varied that each person's faith is unique. Faith is inexhaustibly mysterious. Liveliness and continuing growth in faith require self-examination and readiness for encounter with the faith perspectives of others. Any of us can be illumined in our efforts to relate to the holy by the integrity we find in the faith stances of others, whether they are religious or non-religious. I believe faith is a human universal. We are endowed at birth with nascent capacities for faith, how these capacities are activated and grow depends to a large extent on how we are welcomed into the world and what kinds of environments we grow in. Faith is interactive and social. It requires community, language, ritual, and nurture. Faith is also shaped by initiatives from beyond us and other people initiatives of spirit or grace. How these latter initiatives are recognized and imaged or unperceived and ignored powerfully affects the shape of faith in our lives. Faith is not always religious in its content or context. Faith is a person's or group's way of moving into the force field of life. It is our way of finding coherence in and giving meaning to the multiple forces and relations that make up our lives. Faith is a person's way of seeing him or herself in relation to others against a background of shared meaning and purpose. Faith, so 
Richard Nibhur and Paul Tillich tell us is a universal human concern. Prior to our being religious or irreligious, before we come to think of ourselves as Catholics, Protestants, Jews, or Muslims, we are already engaged with issues of faith. Whether we become non-believers, agnostics, or atheists, we are concerned with how to put our lives together and with what will make life worth living. Moreover, we look for something to love that loves us, something to value that gives us value, something to honor and respect that has the power to sustain our being. Some of the more recent work of the comparative religionist Wilfred Cantwell Smith claims our attention. Smith is one of the very few students of the history of religion who has the linguistic competence to study most of the major religious traditions in the languages of their primary sources. His treatment of the Hindu term for faith, shraddha, perhaps puts it best. It means, almost without equivocation, to set one's heart on. To set one's heart on someone or something requires that one has seen or sees the point of that to which one is loyal. Faith, therefore, involves vision. It is a mode of knowing, of acknowledgement. One commits oneself to that which is known or acknowledged and lives loyally with life and character being shaped by that commitment. The Hebrew, the Greek, and the Latin words for faith parallel those from Buddhist, Muslim, and Hindu sources. They cannot mean belief or believing in the modern sense. For the ancient Jew or Christian to have said, I believe there is a God, or I believe God exists, would have been a strange circumlocution. The being or existence of God was taken for granted and therefore was not an issue. Faith, rather than belief or religion, is the most fundamental category in the human quest for relation to transcendence. Faith, it appears, is generic, a universal feature of human living, recognizably similar everywhere, despite the remarkable variety of forms and contents of religious practice and belief. Each of the major religious traditions studied speaks about faith in ways that make the same phenomenon visible. In each and all, faith involves an alignment of the will, a resting of the heart, in accordance with a vision of transcendent value and power, one's ultimate concern. Faith, classically understood, is not a separate dimension of life, a compartmentalized specialty. Faith is an orientation of the total person, giving purpose and goal to one's hopes and strivings, thoughts and actions. The unity and recognizability of faith, despite the myriad variants of religions and beliefs, support the struggle to maintain and develop a theory of religious relativity in which the religions and the faith they evoke and shape are seen as relative apprehensions of our relatedness to that which is universal. Again, our touchstone for today is faith. I invite you to pause several times throughout your day for three conscious breaths and to reflect on the faith 
that abides in you, regardless of your religious path. And may you create a great day.